Hello, I'm Bill from Mallon Pens, and uh, today my buddy Dax gave me this piece of, uh, it almost looks like a piece of gray plywood, but he gave it to me, and we are going to turn a pen from it. So uh, let's see how that goes. When you get the pens, they're typic the pen to pen kits, typically the tubes are smooth, and so what you want to do is rough it up with some sandpaper so that the adhesive sticks better inside of your pen blank. It's got more surface area and grip. So that looks much better. Let's check up this blank and drill it. fit in there so let's trim this take our pencil and just kind of trim it just a little bit right about there right about there and then we will glue it up So I like to use a thick CA glue for this. And um, I made this little dowel rod and just beveled the edges that I put this on. Now, one of the other things I like to do is put some thin on the inside and I'll show you that. Take some thin, just basically drop some in here to get the whole inside covered. And that helps prevent any blowouts that you may have when you're, when you're turning the pen because the, it glues the inside together. Then I'll take my thick and I will air on the side of putting on too much and I shall take this and just kind of spread it around nicely so that it covers the entire surface I've seen some people just take and rub glue on just put a bead of glue on it and stick it in that way um, I'm not saying that that's dumb or you shouldn't do that but um, that's dumb and you shouldn't do that you want to get the whole surface glued up once you do that take and put it in there quickly remember it's gonna set up pretty fast so there it is. I get a little twist to make sure that the glue is in there nicely. And then I do not like to use accelerator, so we're going to let that dry for a bit. And then we will come back and uh, start turning the pen. Next thing I do is I'm going to sand these edges with my little jig here. So I'll just stick this in this little jig. Make sure it's just short of the end. And I will put this in here. I will tighten this down. And then I will show you what I mean here. See, so I can just barely see the shiny part. I've just touched that brass. And so that's what I'm going to do on this other side as well. All right, so I've got it ready to turn and... Um, Let's turn on the vacuum and get going. pretty good now one of the things that I like to do here is put some uh, CA glue on it about at this point because with this piece of wood I feel like it might chip out a little bit so I'm just gonna put a little bit of CA glue on it actually a lot of CA glue on it I'm gonna let that soak see how the woods just absorbing it so I want that to go all the way down into the wood grain Okay, we'll let that sit for just a few minutes and then we will turn it again. It 
looks like so far. We will sand it down now, start with maybe some 240 and work our way down up to 600 grit, make it nice and smooth and pretty. And then we will apply the finish to it. So let's get doing that. So I'll start with some 320, then we'll do some 400 and then some 600. So let's do that. So I put down a, some napkins and a piece of wood. I don't want the CA glue dropping all over my lathe, so that's why I do that. So let's, uh, we turn the RPMs down pretty low. Another thing I do, because I don't want CA glue all over me, or well, as little as possible, is that I will put some blue tape on my fingers and my thumb, because from experience, it will stick all over you. All right, so let's put our first coat of CA glue on. What I'll do is I'll take a napkin or a paper towel, and we'll fold it up like this. And let me tell you, make sure you turn on your exhaust, your vacuum, whatever, because that CA glue will smoke up on you as it dries and it smells awful. And you definitely don't want to breathe that stuff. So I'm going to turn on my vacuum and uh, put the first coat on it. do this several times. So there's um, three coats of thin CA. I'm gonna let that dry a bit. Then we'll put three, four, five, ten, whatever I feel like is the best that makes it look the nicest. So, but that's three coats of thin and you get an idea now of what it's gonna look like. That'll look really nice with the gunmetal Glacia, Glacia pen I've got. Okay, I've got a couple coats of medium on it. And one of the things I like to do is kind of feel it, make sure it feels like I want it to. And it feels pretty good, but what I like to do is take this first pad in the series of those micro mesh pads and put some denatured alcohol on it and just give it a very light sanding and then I will put a couple more coats of uh, medium C on top of that. Again, I just want this thing to be like glass. Perfect. So let's do that real fast. If you listen, listen carefully, you can kind of hear just a little bit of the, uh, just a little bit of that um, imperfections coming out. That's all we need right there. And then we will clean that off. Very important that you clean this off. And then we will check see what it looks like here. Oh yeah, that looks beautiful. There's a little bit of uh, sanding stripes in there, so I'll show you how you deal with that. Make sure this is still wet with your denatured alcohol. And it's just, we just wanna do this, just kinda go back and forth like this to get those slight imperfections from the sandpaper out. Cause it cut into it a little bit, so this will fix that. And then we will a little more denatured out. Well, we still got enough on here. Let's turn that. Oh yeah, there we go. That looks beautiful. Let that dry for a second, and then we will put a uh, several more coats of CA on it. Okay, so because I am a freak about this, the finish on these going to sand it lightly one more time and then put one more coat of thin CA on it for the final perfect finish. All right, let's stop it and see what we got. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's flawless. All right, so I'm gonna show you what I like to do here to the ends, because if you look, you can see a little bit of glue kind of goes over the edge there. And we'll go back to where we trim the blank down to touch the, uh, so it was even with the tube. We'll go back there and just barely knock that extra glue off. Here, let me show you. So I don't know if you can see that, but right at the very top, there's what I like to call little fingernails that are left over. So we just want to just barely touch those here on the sander to get rid of that. And so it's pretty simple to do. Just turn this on and just touch it. And now it's perfect. So the next part is to use these mesh, micro mesh sanding pads. And what I do is I just put dots on them so I know which ones are which. So one, two, three, four, five, all the way down to nine. And that is, re is that is indicative of its coarseness. And so one's the most coarse. So I have them in water over here and I make sure that they're good and clean. And so we'll start like so. And I always keep lots of microfiber towels on hand because I want to clean in between each one. So just lightly hit this and then wipe off the stuff. Let's take a look. Now, this is a part that some people don't do. Just very lightly in between each pad, you want to give it a little wipe like that to get off any of the leftover bits from the sanding. You don't have to do it on every one. Just check it every now and then to see what it looks like. Let's see here. So we'll check it real quick and see what it looks like. Still looks beautiful. Get back and forth a few times just to make sure. Clean that off. Okay, we'll keep going. And then I'm just gonna very lightly touch it here at the end. So there's a couple more steps. Some people like to use this uh, Novus Fine Scratch Remover, Remover or this Hut Ultra Gloss. I like to use both. So let's um, shake this up and apply this. And I apply it with a microfiber towel. Put a little bit on here and sling it everywhere. Get it on there, rub it in there nice. Let that dry for a second. Then if you have a reversible lathe, hit the switch to send it the other way. And then just give it another polishing this way as well. Pick a nice clean spot here on our microfiber towel. Give that a little buff. Just like shiny shoes. Now some people might think that's good enough, but they would be wrong. We get us another microfiber towel. And now we use the Hut Ultra Gloss. And then same thing again, put it on reverse, a little bit more of the hut. Let that dry for just a second and then find the clean spot. Give it a little buff. And some people might think that's enough, but they would be wrong as well. Now what we use is uh, literally some Brazilian Cardenduba Car Wax, and not that much, just a little bit. 
Turn this on again. Push that in there just nice and fine. Oh, that's going to be so pretty. Let that run for a second. Watch this. Now that is shiny. Now I also will spin this lathe up a little bit more, just not apply a lot of pressure, but just real quick. Back and forth, and that is it. Turn it back down, and that is flawless. And there it is. So let's put that into the, uh, let's make a pen now. So I've taken the liberty of taking the parts out of the bag of this Glacier pen. And one thing you need to know is that one side, the diameter, is bigger than the other. And so watch, if I put this here, you can see that that's too big and there's a lip. So that's the top, this is the bottom, where that fits flawlessly. That's a nice smooth transition, so make sure you're aware of that. So given that this is the bottom, we want to put this part where the nib threads onto and to the smaller end. And I'll put a block of wood here. And some people have those fancy um, pen assembly kits. I don't have one of those. You don't need it if you know what you're doing. So we want to push this in here. And I'm not saying that people that have them don't know what they're doing. I'm just saying that you don't need to spend that money on that if you are just careful and putting your pens together. And I've never had one mess up. So th there's that end in there. The next part we want to put on is this. And then we want to press this in. Now, here's a decision you have to make is where do you want your clip to go? What do you want it to cover up? Quite frankly, I don't want it to cover up anything, but I guess if I have to cover up something, you know, I'm not really covering anything up. I just it actually would look nice. And so I've got that beautiful piece there, here, then I've got these straight lines here, and then the straight lines, I'll put this in the middle of those straight lines right here. So again, why don't you put that on that block of wood? This is on a nice soft pad. I'm going to press that in. That one in there nice and tight. And you need a decent clamp, obviously, to do this. So that's in there beautifully. Next is the transmission. Well, actually, no, next is the nib. Let's put the nib on. The nib goes here. You see how that lines up nice. And then put our spring on our pin. Drop our reef mill in here, and then put on our transmission, like so. Let's check the end there. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. In and out, nice and smooth. Then we will put our cap on. Look at that with that gunmetal, that looks beautiful. I like that. I may not sell this one. All right, so, and in and out. So let me take some pictures of it and uh, I'll put those at the end of the video.